So assume that you are at your office and you get a call from your manager that a device uh, at uh, some location at some branch office is facing some kind of issues and uh, he or she wants to examine that particular, he or she wants you to examine that particular device uh, and now one way to do that is basically to travel physically to that particular location where the device is located. Otherwise what we can do, we can take the remote access of that particular device uh, from our location and we can try to figure out what the problem actually is. So. Uh, in this video, we are going to talk about the protocols that can be used to take the access of the CLI based devices, uh, the protocols like Telnet and SSH. So let's begin. Hi, my name is Surendra and I am Cisco certified instructor here at iMuta and I will guide you through today's topic. So let's begin. So today we'll discuss about the protocols like Telnet and SSH. Both the protocols like Telnet and SSH, they are used to take the remote access of CLI based devices. Uh, the only difference, the one major difference in between Telnet and SSH is that when you do a Telnet to a device that is located at a distant location, uh, you will get the access but you will not get the access in a secure way. SSH however encrypts whatever data is being sent out from your device to that particular device. It is going to encrypt that entire data so that the attacker in between, uh, he or she cannot be able to read that particular information. So here I have a setup like uh, I have one router here uh, that let's say that is located at Mumbai location and we are here at Pune and what we want like uh, in between like uh, it could be anything it could be a public network or anything like that the only thing that I require from this particular machine at Pune location to this particular machine to this particular device at Mumbai location is that reachability should be there. So just to represent that, I have basically connected these two devices directly. It could be, they could be connected via any means, via any public transport like internet or something like that. So uh, what I had to do, I had to configure one IP address onto this particular device. I had to configure one IP address on this particular device and then we can begin with the uh, Telnet configurations. So with the help of the Telnet, I would be able to access the device from this particular Pune location and to the device that is located at the Mumbai location. I will show you the capture, I will show, the, show you the Wireshark capture, in that capture you can clearly you will be able to see that whatever information that you are sending, whatever command, whatever uh, like uh, syntax that you are running from this particular host device that is not going to be encrypted when it is being used, when it is being accessed via Telnet and it will be going, it is going to be encrypted when it is being you know accessed via SSH. So let's begin, so let's start with the route number one. And on router number one, I will do some basic configuration like I will configure the IP addresses 192.168.10.1. I will do a no shut. Some basic configurations I have done on router number one. I will go on host number one as well. I will configure some IP address on here as well. Configure terminal is 0 by 0, 192.168.10.2. And I will do a no shut as well. Now, uh, what we had to do, we had to go on the router number one and we had to set up it for the telnet services. So. I don't actually have to enable the Telnet service, I just have to, you know, if you are already familiar with some some uh, CLI of the router, what we had to do, we just had to set the Telnet password. Once you are done setting the Telnet password, you will be able to access the device remotely. So what I had to do here, I will set some Telnet password, I will set this device to be accessed remotely via some, some, some other location. So I will just say line VTY, as you know, like VTY virtual terminal yard, it is just a line that we can use to set up the telnet so line with device 0 like I am providing the telnet access for only one device and whatever password I want to write down Cisco 123 whatever and login keyword is mandatory once you put the login login basically means like uh, a, when the device is trying to be accessed via telnet this password has to be checked so now we have set up the telnet and I will just go on the host number I will do a Wireshark capture in between so that I could be able to see <laughs> like what traffic is being sent out and all. So I have done the Wireshark capture, I will minimize it, I will go on the host device and what I will do, I will use the command telnet and I will try to telnet 192.168.10.1. So it's easy to set up the telnet, the one of the biggest advantage of using the telnet that it is easy to set up and telnet 192.168.10.1, you just click on that. Now this device is going to ask the password, password of Cisco123, you enter, you enable or you do some show IP interface brief, you, you show show IP interface brief, you use some basic commands, you you verified like show version and these things like whatever, whatever diagnosis, whatever troubleshooting you had to do, you, you did the troubleshooting and all and you just exit. 
okay now if you see the wireshark capture you see that a lot of traffic is basically captured now uh, you go anywhere like you just click on any 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 particular right click it here you follow you follow the tcp stream and you can clearly see uh, you can clearly see that whatever traffic that you have sent whatever password even the password information like cisco 123 it is there in the clear text format so that is like we should not use Telnet when we had to take the access of a device that is at a distant location because chances are there if any attacker is there in between he or she might be able to basically get the entire information that you are sending. So Telnet is not you know that much a good choice when you are doing remote access for the CLI based devices at a distant location. So to encrypt this this like uh, communication process from this device to that device uh, what we can do we can use the SSH. So uh, as you saw that if I try to take the telnet of this particular device from this particular host one, the entire data that is being sent out, it is in clear text format. So what I want, I want this device to be accessed via SSH. SSH secure cell, it is basically going to encrypt whatever data that is being sent out between the sender and receiver. It is going to encrypt it using some cryptographic keys. So we had to do a little bit confusion for the telnet that I actually have already done. So what we had to do, we had to first set the username. Uh, username you could be any name let's say r1 then uh, for the sss to work properly you have to set a username and password this username and password is going to be used to basically access the device from the remote location you have to set the domain name if your device is part of any domain that is okay otherwise you can set any domain name that you want to set we have to generate some cryptographic keys that keys are going to basically be used to encrypt the data so i'm basically writing 1024 bits keys rsa keys and additionally what we can do we can basically go under the ssh like i can enable the version 2 of the ssh i have to go under the line btty i have to go under the line btty and we have to set that uh, like when this device is going to be accessed remotely you have to check the username and password not only and only the password so login local basically means refer to the local database uh, for the username and password credentials and this is how we are going to set up the SSH. Now what we are going to do, we are going to go on the host machine again. I will go on the host machine and I will try to do it SSH. The SSH hyphen L, SSH login. This is the username that you had to put and this is the IP address where basically you want to access. Like this is the IP address of the device that you want to access. You just hit enter, it will ask you for the password, provide the proper password. Just go one, two, three, you will get the access, show IP interface brief. Okay, show IP interface brief. You can see I'm using the same commands that I used earlier. I'm getting the same output, show version. You can see like uh, I am getting some information. And then whatever troubleshooting I had to do, I basically checked and I basically exist. Now, if you go on the machine and you try to see that some SSH traffic has been passed through the link and it has been captured by the Wireshark tool as well. So what now I can do, I can again try to do right click, follow TCP stream and this time I don't think like you will be able to read anything like this. Of course until you are new from the matrix but anyway you, you won't be able to read anything. Okay because uh, the SSH is going to encrypt the entire data that is being sent out from the particular device. So in this video we actually discussed about the importance of the telnet and ssh so telnet is going to it is not going to encrypt the data that is being sent out from the device to the remote device and ssh is going to encrypt the information that is being sent out from the uh, device to the remote device thank you for watching so if you like this video uh, or if you have any question let us know in the comment section and hit the bell icon for the uh, new updates and subscribe to the channel thank you